So the next step is, now that I know my polarities, I need to do a voltage drop test. So to do that, I'm going to have to back probe into these connectors. And what I'm going to do is take my negative here, and I'm going to back probe this wire because I'll have to plug into the fuel pump, and I'll have to do this off camera. And uh, then that's going to be on one end of my meter. The other end of the meter is going to go to the negative battery cable. And uh, obviously, my connector leads are too short that I, I'm not going to be able to reach the negative battery cable. So I'm going to have to get like a long wire or something to go ahead and make the connection. And um, actually, that's going to be a problem. Actually, that's going to be a real problem. Um, yeah, let me get this connected and. Uh, I have to think about this. All right, so here's my issue is um, the only wire that I know that I have that's going to be able to reach from the battery to the back of the car is this uh, kind of household um, ground wire here. And what I'm worried about is on this voltage drop on the car, because I don't know any specifications or anything like that, there's kind of a rule of thumb that a voltage drop, anything less than 0.5 volts, is going to be acceptable. And this wire alone is going to cause a voltage drop just in itself. Uh, I'd imagine of, of you know, probably even two tenths of a volt, possibly. So um, what I want to do is calculate how much voltage drop I'm going to get from 15 feet of this wire, which is what I'll need to reach from the battery to the back of the car. So um, I'm going to have to go ahead and do that and look online and uh, find a voltage drop calculator where you can enter in data about the wire and everything. And this will uh, tell me what I need to know. Okay, so according to the voltage drop calculator, um, they require amperage, and I have no idea what the amperage on this fuel pump's gonna be. It's, it's probably gonna be somewhere between three and five amps. So using that in the formula, um, it's, it's gonna be somewhere around 1.5 to two um, I'm sorry, 0.15 to 0.2 uh, volts um, that will drop just from using this wire. So whatever reading I get, I will need to subtract. So basically, if I get anything at 0.6 volts or better of voltage drop or lower, then that's going to be good. Um, so if I see anything under 0.5 for sure, it's really good. So that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up again. I'm going to hook up some of this cable to the negative battery, bring it around to the back of the car, and then connect my voltmeter to the negative terminal on the fuel pump and to this negative cable. And then I'm gonna turn on the fuel pump, it will show the voltage drop, and we're looking for 0.5 or less as a good reading. All right, so one end of my extension cable to negative battery. Now I've back probed the, ah man, now I already forgot, oh yeah, negative. So this is the negative terminal on the battery that I've back probed, and real quick I'm just going to check to make sure that my back probe is right, and we can see I've got continuity so my back probe is working. And now I just need to plug this in, alright, that's plugged in now, that's a little hard to reach. And then I'll need to get this lead. Actually, I need to set to volts right there. And then uh, this green wire here is from the negative on the battery. So now I'm connected negative to negative. And all I need to do now is turn on the pump. And we are hoping to see anything less than uh, actually 0.6. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and give the minimum voltage drop from my wire of 0.15. So um, anything under 0.65 is going to be good. Anything under 0.5 is going to be real good. All right, yeah, one of the nice things about taping this is, of course, the fuel pump ended before I could get back and take a look, so I can just play back the tape. And I saw it was about uh, 0.24, which also, considering for the voltage drop in the wire that I'm using for the extension, that's well within spec. Anything under 0.1 is really, really good. So that negative side does not have any high resistance, so we are down now to our last moment of truth. I'm going to repeat this test, and I'm going to back probe onto that positive side move my wire 
over to the positive side of the battery and do this again and we will see if we get a reading of less than 0.5 if we do that's it this vehicle will need a fuel pump if it is higher than 0.5 then we have an electrical problem which I'm not sure I'd be happier about because it might be easier now that I'm looking at this to drop the tank it doesn't look so bad after all so let's see what happens on the next video no just kidding hang in there we'll see what happens back probed into the positive this time and I've moved my extension wire over here to the positive terminal and um, actually I forgot to uh, check for continuity there but that's okay since the fuel pump is grounded this time I should get a uh, voltage which I do so and that's okay that's normal so let's clip this on here and it is time for the moment of truth I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the fuel pump and if this number is 0.6 or less then this car needs a fuel pump, no doubt about it. All right, I got 0.44, especially considering subtracting the length of the wire. That is conclusive proof. This car needs a fuel pump. Either the fuel pump is bad or weak or the filter bag is restricted, but either way, it doesn't matter. Fuel pump's got to come out, and if the fuel pump's got to come out with this many miles, it's going to be replaced. So that is going to fix this car, and um, I am probably not going to film that just for safety reasons, but the bottom line is, you know, mostly in my videos, I want to show the diagnosis because that's what I think is the important part, and for me, the fun part. Um, if you want to learn to change a fuel pump, I guess you can look at other videos, but I don't think many of them are going to show this. So that's it. This car needs a fuel pump. I'll come back after I replace the fuel pump on this car, and we will verify that it works. You know, Archimedes, that was a pretty cool cat and all, but Sivius. Now that dude was straight up tripping. Hey guys, just wanted to show you this real quick. I decided to go ahead and dissect up this pump and uh, see what I could find. And check this out. Uh, this is that gray wire. Actually, it's not the one that I, I back probed. This is on the fuel pump side. That power side wire is completely almost burned up. So um, it does appear, actually, ultimately, this was a electrical problem, but it was in, in the fuel pump. I am not going to just fix this electrical cord now that I've got this pump out. New pump, no question about it. But it does go to show, if, if this electrical failure was anywhere on the vehicle side outside of the fuel tank, well, changing the fuel pump would not have fixed it, but just happens to be that this is on the fuel pump side. So still correct diagnosis, and a new fuel pump will fix this vehicle. Always do your electrical before jumping right to a component change. All right. All right, so I've changed the fuel pump, uh, oh, by the way, at a cost of like 250 bucks. So I think my friend would have much preferred a electrical problem, but it wasn't really that bad. The tank is actually still down, but I did test this before I put everything back together and just started the pump. It works way better now. I'm going to give you a look. Um, I want you to notice two things. First of all, the pressure is going to be way, way higher. But second, watch how fast this new pump jumps this gauge up to spec. It's, it's dramatically faster than if you remember before when it was just kind of crawling up to 35. This thing goes right to it. So this is going to be a much, much better performance for this truck. So go ahead and take a look. Well, how about that? So strike up another victory for methodical, strategic diagnostic approach as opposed to just guessing parts. Now, granted, I guess somebody could have looked at the gauge and guessed that they need a fuel pump and replaced it, and it, it would have fixed the problem um, just the same, actually quicker. But it still would have meant the person is no more than a parts changer. Uh, very well. Very well could have been that we might have found, say, a really, really high resistance on the negative side. Could have been a bad ground. You go through, you change the fuel pump, same thing. You would never have seen that ground cable that's up in the cross member well over the fuel tank. Um, that could have happened, but uh, it didn't in the, this case. And I actually wish it did because it would have been just evidence to show not to change parts without a diagnosis. But in this case, the fuel pump did it, so be it. And uh, thanks for watching. I really hope that this helps you to diagnose if you have a fuel problem.
Hey, real quick guys, for those of you not familiar with the voltage drop test, one of the most important tests that you can do for electrical problems, you might be a little bit confused as to why that fuel pump, which clearly had an electrical problem, why didn't that show up in the voltage drop test? So the reason is because when you do a voltage drop test, what you are testing is for resistance in the line between the power source, the battery, and where you are probing at. Remember, I was probing at the connector to the fuel tank. So again, the purpose was to determine, do I need to drop the fuel tank? Because there was no resistance detected outside the fuel tank, I know that the problem must be in the fuel tank. So I'm gonna just show you this real quick. We're gonna go ahead and do a voltage drop test on this pump, and you will clearly see that the test really does work and it's quite accurate. All right, what I have here is a very simple circuit with the fuel pump. We've got the negative, probed up to the negative connector. As you can see, this gray wire here is my positive, and you can see that's all chewed up. And what we're gonna do is when I touch the positive from the battery here, the pump, of course, runs. So what we're gonna do is, that'll be our switch right there, so I'm gonna set that aside. And then we're gonna do a voltage drop test here on this gray wire. So again, the gray wire, to do the voltage drop test, I'm going to go from the battery positive to the positive on the pump here. So I've back probed right at the pump. So that we're doing positive from the battery to here. So this is where I'm doing the voltage drop. This is going to include this messed up area. And I got my leads reversed, but that's okay. You can see here what the voltage drop is gonna be, and it's gonna be very high this time. So when I go ahead and I complete my circuit, let's get out of your way here. You see I'm hovering well over spec. Now, to prove this even further, let's do this. Instead of moving the power source here, let's move it down here where I've got some good wire. And now watch the voltage drop. It's gonna be much lower. Okay, so that explains the voltage drop test. Again, what you're testing is from the power source to where you are probing to. So again, to determine whether I need to drop the fuel tank or not, the furthest part I was able to get to was the connector at the fuel tank. The voltage drop was fine, so I know I have to go in the fuel tank. All right, take care, guys.